guys, it's Sarah. Okay, so today's video is going to be just about Harry. Just Harry, only. So here's the latest news that's been happening in the past couple days. all know Harry's song or his album whatever is going to be coming out tomorrow April 7th and I think if you're in the US it will be coming out at 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time so basically I'm staying up <laughs> or maybe that's a bad idea I don't know but it's definitely going to be out 8 a.m. UK time and also along with Harry's single his interview with Nick Grimshaw will be out tomorrow as well and that's what this video is about so even though we didn't get the official interview yet we basically got the majority of the interview in text by the way guys I heard the interview is two hours long and Nick Grimshaw covered a lot with Harry, especially on his dating life, and that's what I'm gonna cover first. So here's the good stuff. So Harry says, I haven't dated in a long time. I went away to do the movie and then did the album, so I haven't in a while. He adds, I started the album end of February last year for three weeks and had to stop for five months when I went to do a movie. I came back to it in July and finished writing it in December. Yeah, maybe Harry hasn't dated in a long time because he's taken. You know, he's not really looking for anybody. But yeah, it's true. Harry's been busy with his career, like his album, his acting career. He doesn't have time for all this other stuff, AKA bullshit and drama. He says, I used to research dates and then I said, I'm not going to do that anymore. It's impossible to go in with a perception of someone and you've never met them. I started feeling that was wrong and weird. Despite being one of the most eligible bachelors on the planet and worth $56 million, Harry insists he isn't the catch he has been made out to be. He says, I think I snore and also I quite like routine, so I don't know if I'm incredibly spontaneous, he says. All right, let's break this down into paragraphs. I'm gonna start off with the first paragraph. I like how Harry said, I used to research dates. Like he used the word research, like it's kind of quirky, but I totally get what he's saying. Like online dating sucks because you don't actually know the person. You're basically just going off of a profile picture and all this other trash. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to do that. So I get where Harry's coming from, especially if you're a famous person. It's also kind of hard to date when you're you're famous because the person might know everything about you, but you know nothing about them. So it's kind of awkward. And just the fact that Harry says he thinks he snores. How does he think he snores? Did someone tell him that? Did Louis wake him up in the middle of the night? Like, um, Harry, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Literally pushes him off the bed. <laughs> it says, during his dating dry spell, the star came to an epiphany how his previous approach to dating was wrong and weird. Hmm. So dating Kendall and Taylor and all those other beards was considered wrong and weird to him. Was it because because they were women. <laughs> Also guys, Harry got asked about the Obama rumors, <laughs> AKA Harry and Obama. I like totally ship that hardcore. So Harry says, I'm not allowed to talk about that, Harry on the Obama rumors. Did he seriously say that? He says, after being informed that this rumor is so big that it comes up in Google images, he added, any images? That's weird. That would be so confusing as a school child. I know they would be like, oh my God, a sheep gave birth to Harry Styles' face. Another rumor is that you take all your dates on helicopter rides, Grimmy replied. No, I've never done that, Harry says, with Grimmy responding, not even with Barack. Harry says, no, it was his helicopter. I'm not even joking. The first time I read it was his helicopter, I thought Harry said I was his helicopter and I fucking died. I thought Harry made a sexual innuendo about Barack Obama. Like, no, bitch, I was his helicopter. That would have been everything. Why didn't Harry say that? <laughs> but no, he said it was his helicopter. And this post says, Harry about dating women, I don't have time. Harry about dating men, it was his helicopter. And if you guys were wondering what Harry was talking about with the sheep and stuff like that, well, there's a rumor that Harry uses sheep placenta as a facial mask, which isn't true. He's already denied it in the past. So that's what he was talking about in it. It's just funny that Nick Grimshaw could have talked about any rumor, you know, like Larry Stylinson, Harry's been rumored with his bandmate. But no, he talks about Harry and Barack Obama. Something that shouldn't even be taken seriously, something that pretty much died out in like, what, 2013? Could have been 2014. But hey, no hate. I'm still in support of Obama. <laughs> And also Harry talked about cutting his hair. He said, I felt very naked for a while. I was like, yeah, I've got to shave my hair off. It wasn't a hard decision. It got made into a wig. I actually identify with that statement because at one point in my life, I did cut my hair really, really short, like a Miley Cyrus pixie cut. And I felt naked as well. I was like, this is not me. It was really hard to get used to. And then I just grew my hair back out. So I totally get what he was feeling when he did it. But except I didn't make my hair into a wig like he did. And also here are some more pictures from Radio 1. Just look how cute Harry is. Oh 
oh my fucking god. And oh my god, guys, look at his pants. I'm not sure if these are like pajama pants because they kind of look like pajama pants. And also not even that, Harry's legs are crossed. Like he's so proper. I can't. Also, somebody pointed out that Harry might have a tongue piercing, but if you guys look closer, it kind of just looks like the lighting or spit. I don't think that's a tongue piercing because I think tongue piercings are more like Right here, but I don't think Harry's tongue piercing if he had one would be way back there I think it's spit because you know he thirsty but girl me too I'm like salivating over here because of Harry Styles <laughs> also if you guys look at Harry's hands He's wearing a ring on like every single finger and I think one of the rings is a rose And also someone pointed out on a website that specific ring is like an engagement ring So why is Harry trying to make it sound like he's single nothing really adds up also Harry says I don't want to be viewed as the woman that when I read it that shattered my heart into a billion pieces like seriously it's 2017 the womanizer rumor should have ended like 2014 Harry has done nothing to make him seem like a womanizer recently maybe in the past but I wouldn't even say womanizer I think the term would be like Lothario but that's still kind of insulting Harry has never been that it's just the media made him out to seem like that just because he'd hang out with a lot of women or older women but Harry shows absolutely no sign of that now he hasn't for like what two three years so I don't get why people still think he is so I'm glad Harry Styles cleared that up he's like I don't want to be seen as the womanizer I mean who would anyway it's a complete insult also this says he buys his own groceries and while playing material to his mom Anne and her husband Robin twist his stepdad joked of the sound effects where did you get that duck his friends are equally as blunt the first time I went home not wearing trainers I was in a pair of boots he describes someone said what the bloody hell are they I like to separate working and being at home with family, he adds. Right, so that was like a lot of information in just three little paragraphs. But I can just imagine that though, Harry coming home with like three inch heels and people being like, what the fuck? <laughs> How much you want to bet though that Louis was the one who said, what the bloody hell are they? Because Louis is so British. Also going back to the topic of dating, Harry said, I haven't dated in a long time really. I have a couple of candles left still though. What does that even mean? <laughs> so he's correlating his absence of dating life to how many candles he has left. Is he saying that he used candles for ambiance for his past date? Or is he still using some candles? I don't know, Harry's just another kind of sort. <laughs> also when talking about his songs, Harry says, For a while before, all I thought about it was stressing about what it was going to be. It gave me a chance to completely step away from it for a bit and have a real break. By the end of the movie, because we were swimming so much, I just wanted to write songs. I think we wrote about 70 songs, we did 50 songs and ideas in Jamaica, and that's including like little ideas, full songs. I'd say there were 30 songs probably. Holy shit, he wrote 70 songs and then narrowed it down to like 30? Are we going to be hearing 30 songs on Friday? That is if the album comes out Friday and not just a single? How many songs are we getting tomorrow? Is it just a single? Is it an album? Because guys, if it's an album, it sounds like we're getting 30. And I don't know why he couldn't just split that up into like, two albums. And also guys, I heard that Harry's going on tour, which to be honest, if you have like 30 plus songs, you can go on two tours. <laughs> Nick Grimshaw says, we had a massive chat, sat down for like two and a half, three hours or something. It was really, really long, but it was really good. There was a lot to talk about. There was talking about how it is now being a solo artist, how it was writing the record, how you even start to write a solo record, where he wrote it. He spoke all about making the album and basically having to become a solo artist and that pressure of knowing that the world's going to want to hear this and are going to want to judge it as well but we played it in the room and it's so good it's really really good and it's much no offense it's much better than I thought it was gonna be the fact that Nick Grimshaw would even doubt Harry's artistic creativity but guys I can't everybody who's listened to Harry's song or anybody who spoke about it they're all saying that this is so good and now I just can't wait to hear it. I want to hear it right now but we got to wait till tomorrow I still want to know if it's gonna be five minutes or not though but guys I'm gonna die tomorrow because not only are we gonna hear the song but we're gonna hear a two-hour interview you know how long that is actually it's not long enough I kind of wish it was like five hours <laughs> But it sounds like Nick Grimshaw asked him a lot of questions, so I can't wait. Harry says, I just wanted to not be somewhere that I'd get distracted. It was 360 of writing. You'd go home for dinner, write at the house, then go back to the studio. I liked being away from everything and doing it like that. I was with the guys who I was writing it with, and we just wanted to make what we wanted to listen to, and that has been the most fun part for me without making the whole album. This also says, quizzed on whether he had sought advice on cutting the songs down to an album, Styles revealed Ed Sheeran had offered his thoughts. 
He says, I played Ed Sheeran a few songs after the album was finished. He didn't say that he didn't like any, but he did like one song that isn't on the album. Really, Ed? <laughs> Out of 30 songs to pick from, if not more, you couldn't even find one and you had to choose one that was not even on the album? Jeez, I would like all of them. I guess we're all just biased. Harry also says, I've spoken to Adele a little bit. She knows one of the guys that I wrote it with, his music a lot, but I don't think so much advice. I just like how she does stuff. I think she leads by example. She's the biggest, she's amazing, she's the best so she should be the biggest. The thing with her is she's a different thing. She's just good at it. I like how she does everything. It looks very nice. Okay, one, I agree with everything he said about Adele. Couldn't have said it better. And two, how can people even call Harry a womanizer after this? Literally, when Harry talks about any woman, he's so classy about it. He's so nice. Like, that is mad respect that he gave Adele. Also, guys, if you thought you were just gonna get a single from Harry in an interview, Nope, you were wrong. Guess what? Harry's gonna be featured in more interviews in the future this month. This is April. Daryl Morris tweets, confirmed Monday night, Harry Styles will be on my show for a chat and to introduce Sign of the Times. So you're literally saying after I die on April 7th, I'm going to be dying again on April 10th? Okay. So if you guys want the whole layout, April 7th, he's going to be on Nick Grimshaw's show and also with Ryan Seacrest. April 8th, he's gonna be on Radio 2 Saturday Breakfast Show. April 15th, Saturday Night Live, and April 21st, The Graham Norton Show. This is too much. This is definitely Harry's month. This is his year. And also Harry says, I don't like saying something for the sake of it. Harry talking about why he rarely tweets. I'm actually really glad Harry said that because I never really knew why he never tweeted that much. But I totally respect his answer. I don't get all the celebrities who just tweet stuff to tweet stuff. You know, like if you don't have really a purpose to say something, if it's just entirely random, why do you feel the need to tweet it? Like people don't need to know all your business. So I think Harry is kind of more of a private person. He feels like he doesn't need to just say something for the sake of it. And as I said before, I respect that. My parents tell me that all the time. They're like, Sarah, you don't need to just go tweet that. And also, I think Harry's trying to keep a level of professionalism on his Twitter because he's kind of expanding his brand. Harry wants to be more mature. He wants to be taken seriously as an artist and maybe an actor more in the future. So I think Harry knows that when he goes to get a job, people will be looking at his Twitter to see what he's all about. So he wants to keep a good image for himself. I've learned that too. I know that I want a job and employers are going to be looking at my social media so I made another Twitter and another Facebook and another YouTube because I don't want them to find my fandom shit. So yeah guys when you get jobs you're gonna have to make another Twitter account because I don't think you want your employers to see you shipping Larry Stylinson. <laughs> Not that I think it's bad but you need a level of professionalism. I don't want people to know the real me. <laughs> but going back to Harry saying I don't like saying something for the sake of it, this person points out so that means every time he tweeted lyrics or something that could directly be linked to Louis he really needed people to know. Interesting. Remember that time a couple of hours before Louis tweeted announcing that his son has been born? Harry said flowers all around Remember that time the birth certificate came out? He says preaching to the convinced. So it's either Harry is being a little hypocritical by saying that or all his tweets actually meant something. Because Harry says that he doesn't like to tweet something for the sake of it. He doesn't really like to write something and, and have it be random. So that means that every tweet that we thought was bullshit or random, that actually probably meant something and that probably was very important for us to know. That's if what Harry's saying is true and he's not being hypocritical or lying. So very interesting. Also when Harry was talking about Adele, he said, for my 21st, she gave me one of her albums, 21, and said, I did some cool stuff when I was 21, good luck, and I was like, geez, that is everything. Adele's basically like, here's my album, don't do what I did. <laughs> I wonder if Harry learned any advice from her album. I mean, damn, that was a great album. It was a teardropper. Maybe it gave him some inspiration. That's a great sales pitch though, giving someone your album like, good luck. <laughs> this is what I learned when I was 21 and you're 21. What a perfect opportunity. But guys, going back to the pictures of Harry, if you just look at these new pictures of Harry from Radio 1, compare that to the pictures of Harry from 2013 because they look damn well the same. Harry is not aging. He's just not aging at all. If anything, he's stayed the same. He is um, going that way, down. He's getting younger.
I realized that I can't even speak anymore or formulate sentences because that didn't even make sense. But yeah, Harry's getting younger, he's not aging. Harry also says, in the least weird way possible, it's my favorite album to listen to at the moment. Harry talking about his solo album. Yes, this is the stuff I like to hear. Harry being confident and listening to his own album. I don't care if people say that's arrogant. Nope. If you are proud of something that you created, something you spent so much time on, damn, you can like your own album. You can buy your own album. Like, damn, like, I feel like if I made an album, I would be so proud of that shit. I would buy my own album and I would just listen to that on repeat. I don't care if that sounds narcissistic. Like, sometimes, guys, I watch my own YouTube videos because I'm proud of what I create. So, yeah, hashtag no shame. And also guys, if you were wondering, Harry now has a SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube, and website. It's happening. So no, I don't have a link to these things, but I'm pretty sure if you go to any of those sites, you can just type in Harry Styles and you can find it. This shit is official, man. I'm so excited. And not only am I excited, I'm just so proud of Harry. Harry says, if nothing happens with it, I still love it. My favorite part to the overall thing is listening to the album and making all the changes. Yeah, exactly. I agree. I would do the same thing if I made an album. And that's actually how you get better as an artist too. You gotta really listen to the way you sound and you got to figure out your own sound to your album and you got to do that by listening to it and I love how Harry's like if nothing happens with it bitch really if nothing happens with it Harry, your stuff's going to be number one on every chart. It also says one of the songs on Harry's debut album is a song he's written a few years ago. Um, is this Don't Let Me Go? Because Harry wrote that a few years ago. I swear if that's gonna be on the album, I am done. And then to wrap this all up, in my last video, I didn't really talk about Harry shooting his music video, but I did show you guys the footage in my last video and I wrote out my reaction in text form, but I never verbally talked about it. So here's some pictures in the behind the scenes of Harry's music video and a lot of people thought this picture was actually Harry up in the air but no guys that is a body double for all the shots that were really high up in the air, they didn't want Harry to be that high, so they had a body double. And that's why it looks creepy as fuck. And now that picture is being turned into a meme, and I love it. And also, oh my god, I loved when people were turning the pictures of Harry flying in the air into, like, him being Mary Poppins. This also says, Harry literally cut a hole in his $3,000 jacket so he could wear his harness underneath it. <laughs> Bitch got money. If I was worth millions and millions of dollars, I mean literally a $3,000 coat would be like 10 bucks to me. I know, that sounds greedy, but that's literally every celebrity. $3,000 is like, whew. So anyway guys, I think I covered as much as I could cover today. And also, sorry if I jumped around a lot in this video. I didn't really organize my post, so I just read it all. But I'm sure everything will make sense tomorrow because we'll be hearing it in one whole interview. But then again, nothing will probably make sense because I'll be dead. <laughs> You guys, quick disclaimer, when the song comes out tomorrow, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to make a reaction video to it yet because I'm not good at reaction videos, I'm really not. When I get really excited about something, I have a hard time developing words so I'm probably just gonna stare at the camera or like die on camera. So maybe I'll talk about the song but I'm not gonna react to it live right there. So sorry if you were looking forward to that, I'll try to think of something. Maybe leave thoughts down in the comments how I should react to Harry's song or what I should do for a video. It's just I'm not one to do react videos. I think react videos are very played up. <laughs> so anyway, leave all your thoughts down below and like always, I make a video whenever I want so like and subscribe. All my social media is down in the description and I will see you guys later when Harry's song and the interview is out. Bye. My honey bun sugar plum, pumpy yum, yum, you're my sweetie pie.